This is Canadian Independent Media. It's Sunday, September the 3rd. This week, NAFTA, opioids, Houston, and Haiti. Here are some important NAFTA news. The group Lead Now says the Trudeau government is demanding that Chapter 11 be kept in any new NAFTA agreement. NAFTA's Chapter 11 is the part that lets corporations sue countries. And usually, they sue to challenge a country's environmental laws. For example, an American chemical company used Chapter 11 to force Canada to allow a gasoline additive we'd rejected because it's a suspected neurotoxin. Now, if a corporation feels it has been treated unfairly, it can always sue Canada in a Canadian court under Canadian law. But with Chapter 11, a corporation can sue Canada in a NAFTA court and using NAFTA laws. I don't know why the Trudeau government wants to keep Chapter 11 in NAFTA. The American position is to remove Chapter 11, which many Canadians might agree with. Remember, Chapter 11 allows NAFTA courts to override Canadian law. This is an important issue. But is anyone asking Canadians what we think about this? Corporate Canada is deeply involved in the NAFTA negotiations. But how about the people of Canada? We've contacted Christia Freeland's office to try to find out what's going on. Thousands will die in Canada this year from drug overdoses tied to opioids. Opioids are basically prescription drugs used for pain relief. And people become addicted to opioids and often die from using street drugs they get when their prescriptions run out. It's a disaster across North America. But part of the story is not being told to us. This whole problem seems to come from a deliberate corporate plan to sell medicines they knew were dangerous. Thousands are dead, but nobody is being held accountable. No corporate executives are going to jail. It seems a corporation can commit mass murder for profit and get away with it. The state of Missouri is suing three drug companies that make opioids. As Missouri Attorney General Josh Hawley says, Quote, these companies knew that the drugs they sell and market are highly addictive, even life-threatening, if misused. And yet, they engage in a deliberate campaign of fraud to convince Missouri doctors and consumers otherwise. They use bogus front organizations and fake research. They use fraudulent advertising and deceptive trade practices. And they repeatedly lied about the risk and the true nature of the drugs they sold. Their fraud has been devastating." Unquote. And today, enough opioid prescriptions are written each year in the U.S. to give every adult American his or her own one-month supply. The corporate world started this problem, but they seem to be getting almost none of the blame, as usual. And now here's Jack with a story about Houston. Tonight, New evacuations and fears the death toll will rise across America's fourth largest city. With the Houston floods and the British Columbia fires, it's worthwhile remembering that our leaders knew exactly what was going to happen to us from the corporate industrial state they have built based on cars, oil, waste, and no respect for nature. They knew decades ago. Exxon knew, the banks knew, the government knew, the media knew, and they all kept it quiet and covered it up. As we watch the news about fires and floods, there is still barely one word about changing the corporate industrial state into something that's less crazy. We need some kind of a revolution in our society if we want to save ourselves. We're going to have to get rid of our corporate governments and media and replace them with something that works better for us. And the only thing I can think of is more and better democracy so that we citizens can start to have a voice in our own futures and try to save those futures. There are things we can look at. Organic farming, mass transit, smaller homes, democratic government. We can do these things. And it's definitely time to start.
The latest concern in Canada is refugees from Haiti crossing our border. Haiti is maybe the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Here is one point of view about why Haiti is so poor. In the 70s, Haiti was not all that badly off. It exported sugar, cocoa, coffee, and many other raw materials. Many Haitians were small farmers. The country was self-sustaining in food. But in the 80s, the US-controlled government of Haiti began taking loans from the World Bank and the IMF. But to get the loans, Haiti had to embrace globalization. They had to lower tariffs, agree to free trade, deregulate, and privatize state-owned businesses. And funnily enough, this is exactly what Canada has been doing for decades. In Haiti, with tariffs gone, cheap food flooded into the country and put the farmers out of business. The jobless farmers were then forced to work in new factories set up by multinational companies looking for low-wage workers. And Haiti was great because it had some of the lowest wages in the world. One company that benefited is Canadian clothing manufacturer Gildan. In 2003, the minimum wage in Haiti was a dollar a day. The government, headed by President Aristide, doubled that to two dollars a day. But one year later, Aristide was ousted in a CIA-backed military coup. The Canadian government participated in that coup, and the corporate world was very happy as the minimum wage was held at $1.50 per day up to 2009. But things have gone downhill in Haiti in many ways since then. But when the CBC tells us that people from Haiti are flooding across our border, they do tend to leave out a lot of the truth about why it's happening. They come from everywhere. Some of them quite young. Some of them traveling under great difficulty. But this latest surge is driven by Haitians who have been told by the U.S. government they could be deported within six months. What was a trickle is now a torrent of asylum seekers. When the West creates poverty and destabilization and war in places like Haiti and Iraq and Syria, the trouble spreads. Canada should, should support people, not corporate profit. If we do that, it will be a much better world for all of us. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching Canadian Independent Media.